All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to class. So we are going to be continuing today talking about the emergence of modern America. Today we're going to be looking at more of the industrial effect that is going on in making America more modernized at the end of the 1800s, beginning of the 1900s. All right, so we are going to begin with this right here. So the time between the Civil War and World War I, the United States goes through this humongous transformation economically because of our development of industrial capabilities and expansion of all these big businesses, large scale agriculture is starting to kick in. You know, we're starting to get labor unions coming in, a lot of conflict going on. So we're getting a lot of these big changes in our society and our economy, and it is all going to have a drastic impact on the modernization of America. So technology is going to be one of the biggest drivers, especially in the northern cities. So, you know, some examples here, you know, the car gets invented. The steam engines really pick up and become more and more powerful and faster. Uh, bicycles make it easier for people to get around instead of, you know, having to buy a, a horse that you have to feed and, you know, take to vets and all that type of stuff. Now you can just, you know, pedal yourself down the street. Uh, we're seeing more public transportation like the trolleys that you see here in the bottom right. So we have a lot going on. Now, business-wise, we're gonna start seeing things called corporations. Now, these are businesses where investors can buy stock in a company and they make a percentage back on the profits because of the money they put into the business. So that is basically, like a lot of businesses today are are basically corporations. So if I wanted to invest my money in Apple, I would, you know, see how much it costs to buy a share in Apple stock, whether it's, you know, you know, it can change from day to day, but let's just say it's a thousand dollars for one stock and I have a thousand dollars that I can do that with. I now can make money back based on what I put into the business because I have a stock. I can make a profit off of that and I don't even work for them. So this, by people giving these investment monies to companies, the businesses are able to have extra money where they can pay to operate and expand their capabilities, which in turn would make more product being developed so that they can sell more and make more profits and pay out those dividends or those shares of the profits to the investors. So, and investors with this could only lose the money that they put into the business. So say I put a thousand dollars into, you know, let's just say Apple again for the example and Apple goes bankrupt and they completely are done, gone forever. I'm only out the thousand dollars. No one can come after me for any more money than what I had put into it. So that is this whole limited liability thing. That is one of the big safety nets of this type of system. So moving on from corporations, let's talk about one of the other big inventions or innovations of this big industrial boom, and that is the Bessemer steel process. This is a cheaper and quicker way to make steel and it is done because there is, <clears throat> you have the big melting pot where all the iron goes in, right? And melts it, turns into this liquid metal. Now to make steel, you have to superheat that iron to burn away the impurities that make iron weaker than a pure steel, okay? So the way to do that is to superheat it is to shoot air into the mixture and that because think of when you blow on the embers of a fire what do they do they flare up they brighten up they get hotter right it's the same process you superheat the metal by shooting oxygen into it it superheats it burns away all the junk and you have a more pure form of metal which is steel and this steel is going to be 
what is used for making the railroads, building the steam engines, building cars, building the skyscrapers that are going to be getting built in cities like New York, Chicago, Philadelphia, Los Angeles. And it's going to basically be one of the biggest resources of the late 19th and early 20th centuries. It is what makes the industrialization of America possible. All right, another big invention, the a more practical use of electricity, the light bulb. You know, Thomas Edison, yes, he had a, a lot of people who worked for him coming up with all these different inventions, and but we get the light bulb from him. And it is a way to have a more a cheaper, more efficient form of light power in the home and in businesses. So now people don't have to worry about, you know, candles and lanterns and things like that, which potentially can cause fires. And like the Great Chicago Fire that happened during this time period uh, happened because of a lantern getting knocked over and then you know, like half the city burned down. So that doesn't happen with electricity. Not typically anyway, it's very rare. So we're going to get Edison founding the first electric company, which you would recognize today as GE, General Electric. It's one of the biggest electric companies in the country still. All right, another big invention during this time is the telephone invented by Alexander Graham Bell, using it to improve communication. So now you can have direct verbal communication with somebody instead of having to mail a letter, which could take days, if not weeks to get to somebody or telegrams, which might take, you know, a couple of hours to several days, depending on how far it has to go. And one of the interesting things about this is you only can really see it in old movies now that are made from like the 60s or earlier. Um, and that is having a switchboard operator who will manually connect your phone to someone else's phone. So, that's this type of scenario. If you've ever seen any of the old black and white movies, you have somebody who's like, you know, they're going to make a phone call. So they, you know, they tap the receiver, then directing your call to the person who's like, I need to get in contact with number 4572. And they will then manually take one of the cables and move it to the number that you need. And then, you know, your call is connected and you can talk to that person. So, yeah, it's pretty interesting how that all works. So now, let's go ahead and continue. Another big invention, the airplane. We got the Wright brothers and Kitty Hawk, 1904. It is basically the first successful airplane flight. And because of this, air travel has exploded exponentially over the last 116 years. So now, you know, it's incredible where planes have come even just a short even just 10 years after this you know 10 years after this you have planes flying around having dog fights shooting at each other in world war one so yeah a lot of advances are happen very quickly now then we get henry ford in his assembly line manufacturing this is a way to make automobiles more cheaply and more easily affordable to consumers because you don't have one person who knows how to build an entire car by themselves. You have a bunch of people lined up and each one has one specific job that they do. Like if your job is to put the lug nuts on to secure a tire, that's all you do for the entire workday. And the next guy down the line takes the, uh, the chuck gun and you know screws them all into place, tightening them up so the wheel doesn't fall off. And that's all he does for the entire work day. Next, let's talk about some of the guys who were in charge of actually doing a lot of these things because they own the businesses. Now, Andrew Carnegie, he was a Scottish immigrant who came to America with like nothing, just maybe $2 in his pocket. And he built the largest steel company that the country had ever seen. He became one of the richest men in the world because of his steel production. And then we get guys like JP Morgan, who was a financing genius. He was loaning money to the American government because of how smart he was financially. 
And, you know, it's amazing the way that these guys were able to make money. Right, Cornelius Vanderbilt, after the Civil War, he would become one of the largest railroad tycoons ever, having the largest railroad business in America. And then there is the granddaddy of them all, John D. Rockefeller, the guy who started the Standard Oil Company. It was the largest oil company like ever of all time. Uh, these guys were worth you know millions and millions of dollars like hundreds of millions of dollars back in their time they would have been worth you know tens of billions if not into hundreds of billions today because of like how valuable their companies were so yeah these guys are very interesting you know a really good resource to learn about them is the men who built america that history channel docudrama series very, very good information. It really sheds a lot of light on these guys. So now, a couple more reasons for the economic transformation about how all of this really developed. So you have these guys who have these gigantic companies that control everything. Uh, it is because of the government's laissez-faire capitalist idea of running things very hands-off, no hardly any government regulations at all. Uh, there is going to be a large increase in labor supply because of immigrants and people moving from farms to the city. So there's plenty of people to work in the factories for these guys. And we, as America, our country had natural resources are you know, quite plentiful. There's lots of natural oil reserves buried in the ground. There's lots of iron buried in the mountains that can be mined out. The coal reserves that we have in mountain, the mountain areas like West Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, Pennsylvania. You know, there's a lot of resource that can be used to fuel this industrialization. All right, so that is where we are leaving off today. Next time we come back, we will be talking about the prejudices that were going on in society during this time period, the late 19th and early 20th centuries. So be sure to come back for that, guys.